Ghost Modern, Chapter 2. Yeah, I understand. I wish there was more we could do, but because it's not you that's ill, we haven't had any GP letters from you and it's it's been six weeks. Yeah, I understand. Okay. Well, HR will be in touch, Sarah. I hope John gets better. I understand. The one thing Sarah couldn't do was understand. She caught a glimpse of herself in the now black screen of the smartphone. She had aged. She had literally got crow's feet around her eyes. Her hair had faded. There was definitely more grey. She took a deep breath and went upstairs. She hesitated at the door, wondered if she could get away with just shouting through it rather than opening it. At the very least, she wouldn't look at it when she went in. Who was that? Sue. What did she say? I don't have a job. What? Did you tell him it was circumstances beyond your control? Yeah. The circumstances were beyond her control. John's control. Anybody's control. Every time she went in, her phone switched off. She didn't even bother taking it in anymore. The lights didn't work in there either now. Candles made it look even more menacing. She was already averting her eyes. If she couldn't see it, it wasn't there, right? Wrong. Sarah, where are you going? I can't, John. I just can't. Downstairs, she switched every light on in every room. She made sure there was noise, either from her phone or the TV. Most importantly, she pulled the curtains and locked the doors. Evenings were the worst. She braced herself, but it always took her by surprise. She slept in the living room these days. She pulled a blanket tightly around her ears and waited. Sarah drifted off, despite her attempts to fight her tiredness. She didn't want to stay awake and face the world that was starting to close around her, but she also feared what could happen in her sleep. Neither state was happy or safe. She couldn't escape fear in either. Abruptly, she's in the old house. It was the house she grew up in as a child. Her mum was there, but didn't she die? Not here. She was as Sarah always remembered her. They could hear the bell ringing. That meant school was starting, but she hadn't finished getting dressed and her mum was telling her she had to go anyway or she'd be late. She was at the door. Her door now and also the one where she was a child. She could see John in the distance. She hadn't met him yet, but he was her husband. She needed to get to him and started to walk down the path. It was dark. It was night. There was a loud hum. Not the hum of a lullaby from a mother to a baby. A metallic throb, like she was in the belly of a machine. A black cloud was coming from the path. She can't move as the cloud surrounds her. It wasn't cloud. That implied natural and soft. This was smoke. Toxic. Unnatural. Choking her. The hum rattled under her skin. Fear clenched her, so there was no possibility of movement. The terror of having no control. The hum was a deafening drone now. Within her ears, inside her head, shaking her insides. No breath. Paralysed and possessed. She is absorbed and being lifted. This was the end. She is awake, shaking violently, like a freezing damp had soaked her bones. Several minutes passed as she gasped for breath, staring wildly with eyes closed, heart pumping furiously, beating in her ears to replace the hum. It wasn't here. It was just a dream. But she couldn't convince herself of that. She still felt the humming shaking her, smelt the smoke in her nostrils. She looked at the time, 3.17am. It was always 3.17am. It was pitch black. She knew she'd left the lights on and TV, but nothing was on. Veins and breath thumping louder. She jumps up and throws herself at the door, crashes through it, comes face to face with papery skin. Sarah screams, but the face swallows the sound. 